Hi, I'm Dr. Amy Tutor, the Skeptical OB, and I'm angry about Elisa Alpert and Jennifer Block's offensive op-ed in the New York Times. How is the piece, Who's Afraid of Gwyneth Paltrow and Goop, offensive? Let me count the ways. It's offensive because it is another example of a prestigious news outlet publishing alternative facts. It's offensive because it sugarcoats the rabid consumerism promoted by a profit-driven corporation. And its claim that pseudoscience is feminist is particularly offensive to women because it is an insult to the memory of famous women scientists who struggled against the misogynistic belief that science and math are too hard for women and that women are reduced to relying on intuition. The following passage in particular devalues the women scientists and mathematicians who struggled against the suffocating misogyny of beliefs about women's intelligence or lack thereof. Quote, throughout history, women in particular have been mocked, reviled, and murdered for maintaining knowledge and practices that frightened, confused, and confounded the authorities, namely the church and later medicine. Criticism of Goop is founded, at least in part, upon deeply ingrained reserves of fear, loathing, and ignorance about things we cannot see, touch, authenticate, prove, own, or quantify. It is emblematic of a cultural insistence that we quash intuitive measures and other ways of knowing, the sort handed down via oral traditions which, for most women throughout history, was the only way of knowing." Unquote. Seriously? That's an insult to the memory of Ada Lovelace, whose mathematical feats laid the groundwork for the computer industry. Lovelace is known for her work on Babbage's analytical engine, publishing the first algorithm for use with the machine. She is rightly remembered as one of the first computer programmers. Lovelace encountered prejudice not because she resorted to feminine ways of thinking, but because she dared master mathematics a discipline that had been considered masculine. It's an insult to the memory of Marie Curie, the first woman to win a Nobel Prize, the first woman, the first person to win two Nobel Prizes, and the first person to win Nobel Prizes in two different fields. She developed the theory of radioactivity, techniques to isolate radioactive isotopes, and discovered two radioactive elements. Curie encountered prejudice not because she resorted to feminine ways of knowing, but because she dared master physics, a discipline that had been considered masculine. It is an insult to the memory of Virginia Apgar. She developed the ubiquitously used Apgar score and is considered a pioneer in anesthesiology, teratology, and neonatology. Apgar encountered prejudice not because she resorted to feminine ways of knowing, but because she dared master medicine, a discipline that had been considered masculine. It's an insult to the memory of Rosalind Franklin, whose pioneering efforts in deciphering the structure of DNA were hidden by men who couldn't bear the thought that women were as capable of performing groundbreaking research as men. Franklin encountered prejudice and was nearly erased from the history books, not because she resorted to different ways of knowing, but because she dared master X-ray crystallography, a discipline that had been considered masculine. It's an insult to the memory of Frances Oldham Kelsey, one of the first women at the FDA, who subsequently was awarded the Presidential Award for Distinguished Service because she refused to back down from her insistence that thalidomide caused birth defects, despite tremendous pressure from drug companies. Kelsey encountered prejudice not because she resorted to feminine ways of knowing, but because she dared to use science to refuse the importuning of the pharmaceutical industry, a profession that had been considered masculine. But most of all, Pretending that pseudoscience is feminist is insulting and harmful to the rising generation of women. We have enough trouble recruiting women into science, engineering, and technology without other women insisting that all three are the purview of men and women should stick to other ways of knowing. 
When we were children, my generation was told that science and math were too hard for women and girls were steered away from physics and engineering toward professions like teaching and nursing. Women like me owe a deep debt to feminist pioneers who, often at great personal cost, paved the way for acceptance of women into every subject of study and every possible career. They insisted, in the face of tremendous male resistance, that women are just as smart as men, as mathematically gifted as men, as capable of conducting scientific research and making scientific discoveries as men. It is deeply insulting to their memories when women like Albert and Bloch portray science as male and pseudoscience as feminist. <laughs>